Hi everyone, my name is Carl Becker. I'm the president of Improving Sales Performance. Really excited to share some thoughts with you today around how to increase revenue. The formal name of this webinar is One Perspective Shift to Increase Revenue right now, but we're gonna talk about different tactics and strategies to generate revenue, to bring your team together, and just ultimately create a healthier, happier sales organization in your company. So let's jump in. The question I like to ask people is, if you needed to generate revenue really quickly, right away, what would you do? And I gotta tell you, most of the answers I get are more leads. Carl, if we could just get more leads, we would kill it, we'll make more money. And while I think more leads is a great idea, I really wanna share with you a different idea. And it comes around with this premise. There's a sales funnel in your organization, right? And at the top is when all your new leads enter. And at the bottom are when you close deals, when you generate more revenue. Well, it takes a long time for most companies for leads to enter the funnel and then go all the way through to the bottom to generate more revenue. So the shift in perspective I'd like you to entertain today is not about more leads, but it's actually about looking at the sales funnel from the bottom up. So instead of thinking about all these leads coming in through the top, going to the bottom, I want you to like look up and I want you to think about all the leads, all the opportunities that are at the bottom of the funnel and think about that as a way to create revenue really quickly. So how are we gonna do that? I'm gonna walk you through kind of three actions today that will help you generate more revenue right away. The first one is to evaluate. What do I mean by that? Well, the easiest and the fastest way to bring more revenue in right now is to evaluate what's already in your grasp, right? To think about the customers you already have, the leads that are at the bottom of the funnel that might be stuck, and then figure out how to unstick them and create more value. That's what we're gonna talk about. So everyone knows this. Um, I think we just tend to forget it, right? Current customers are the most reliable source of revenue. Let me give you a quick example. I was in Las Vegas a couple of years ago speaking at a conference, and I had a client in Las Vegas near the airport. And we hadn't worked together for maybe six to nine months. And I was like, you know what? I've got a couple hours between the conference and catching my flight. So I gave him a call and I said, hey, can I swing by your office just to say hi? And I don't want to surprise you or shock you, but I have some ideas. I've been thinking about you. I have some ideas I want to share. I've got another client pretty similar to yours in another part of the country. How about I come in, just reconnect, and I share these ideas with you and we see what happens. He was like, sure, great. There's a hint right there. If you can create value for your customers, they're always going to want to hear from you. So I come in, we hadn't worked together for probably six to nine months, like I said, and I start, just started to reconnect. How's it going? How's your life? And then I started to share these ideas. I've been working with them ever since. So current customers are a super reliable way to create more revenue, especially if you bring them value. So how do we do that? I'm going to walk you through three steps. First step is evaluate what you already have. I love to bring my team involved. I love to bring the team together when we evaluate what, evaluate what we already have. So here's the like, lesson I like to say is, get a list of all your best customers, bring your salespeople in your room, account people in the room, and just start to answer these questions as you th think about each customer. First question, then you should be asking this all the time, especially if you're in sales or you're running the company. Are you making your customers successful? Ultimately, they started to work with you because you create value. You were solving a problem that they had. So. Are you making your customers successful? If you're not, I would almost stop right here and go fix that. But assuming you are, then here's some other questions. Have you solved all or just some of your customers' problems? Do they see the value that you create for them? Are they happy with that value? Would they give you a referral? Do they want more of what you do? Are they fans? Getting your team to think through this with the customers that they manage is an excellent way to start to find immediate opportunities. And that's really the next step. Once you've identified these people, keep that team together and start thinking, about question, uh, start thinking about the answers to these questions. Have you shared or presented all your solutions to your customers? This is my favorite. If your customer had a magic wand, what would they wish for? What would that wish cause to make, for ha make happen for them? I mean, we're really thinking about value. What do they still need to achieve? And if we know what it is, can we solve it? So this brainstorm idea is getting everyone together and starting to write down all these different ideas of what we could present or pitch to our current customers, just like I did in Las Vegas. Then what we do is we start to work a plan, right? We create that plan and we work the plan. So I'm gonna just say, strategize and present your solutions. Get out there, give them a call, reach out to your customers, set a time, 
talk about their business goals. Just say, hey, do you have a time for me to share some ideas like I did in Las Vegas? And I got a guarantee if you do this, you will generate more revenue and you're going to reconnect with a lot of your customers and they're going to be grateful. It's also going to start to create momentum and fill up your sales team, which is also a big secret of creating revenue right away, creating momentum and fostering that momentum with your team. So that's kind of action number one. Action number two is center focus. I want you to think about what I just said, the first part of this webinar. What did we do? We started to think about the funnel in a different way, not top, middle or center and bottom, right? But we started to think looking back up from the bottom. So center focus means focusing on the leads that are stuck in the middle. And I've got to tell you, they're probably stuck. Okay. And if you can unstick them, there's a ton of gold. There's a ton of opportunity there. So I want you to start to now think, change your perspective about the middle of the funnel, not about new leads like we originally talked about, not about the bottom of the funnel, but literally who's in the middle of the funnel. There's a ton of untapped gold there. Let me tell you a story. Um, I have a, a lot of different clients, but one of my clients, it's, it's December, and we're trying to figure out how to finish strong in December, how to finish strong in Q4. And we started to go, Let's implement this. Let's look at who's in the middle of the funnel. So I scheduled 90 minute meetings with all the different salespeople. I had them come with the top five leads that they've talked to that are stuck. And then I asked them, what would you do to unstick them? And I kept an open mind and I told the rest of the team to keep an open mind too. And we ultimately agreed on a solution. Let me tell you what it was. This customer has online training and in December, a lot of times we're really busy, right? Holiday seasons, end of year, end of school, just a lot of change in our lives. So one of the salespeople said, you know what? What if we could offer an additional 30 days of this program so people could start in December and not feel under pressure that there was a time limit of how much coaching they needed for this online training? We, we literally extended uh, the offering by 30 days and we were able to bring a lot more sales in into, into December because it gave that cushion. It, it's what the customer wanted. It's a customer centric approach and your salespeople know what your customers want. So in this model, think about your ripest leads and your salespeople know what they are. And then ask them these questions. What could we do to improve sales? And they're going to tell you. And I would just encourage you to listen and get into action. The second part is thinking about choke points, right? Um, if, if you have a ton of KPIs in your sales funnel and your CRM, then you already know where your populations are growing and getting stuck and they're not moving. Typically, the middle of the funnel starts to balloon wider and wider and wider if something's broken or stuck. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to identify these choke points within your funnel, get into action about it. There are some steps that I generally tell people to do. Look for large and growing populations in your funnel. Use qualitative and quantitative data. Ask your team, where do you think people are getting stuck? And then look at the data too. And then start to think about how you're gonna get into a solution by revisiting the steps you take to move leads down and through your funnel. Like literally figure out where they're stuck and start to think about ways to unstick them. And that leads us to number three, organize and mobilize. I'm gonna tell you a story and then we can go through a couple of these kind of action items. But the story is this, I have another client that generates 300 to 500 webinar signups twice a month. They do webinars twice a month. And typically they have 300 to 500 people sign up for those webinars. A lot of people, right? So over time, this population of people that have signed up for webinars just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And what I started to realize was only about 25% of those people actually attend the webinar. And of that group, only about 20 to 30% book an appointment. That's the next step in the sales process. So we started to go, wait, what's going on here? And what's going on here is there's a big group of people that raised their hand. I want to learn more. I want to go to the webinar. Or I sat through the webinar, but I didn't take an action. There was something missing. So we decided to revisit the process and encourage the salespeople and start to put kind of a pilot program in place to call attendees before they actually attend, people that signed up, and also to uh, call all the attendees that didn't book appointments. And guess what? We generated about another 10 to 20% lift in appointments every webinar by doing that. And that in turn generated a 10 to 20% increase in revenue too, simply by revisiting what was already going on and unsticking these leads. So when I tell you there's gold trapped in your funnel, there is. And the way you get through it is what we just talked about and then getting into action. Organize 
and mobilize. So again, I say, ask your team, what are new ideas we can do to improve the current sales process? How can we get into action? Who's gonna get into action? Who owns that? And how are we gonna measure it? And then finally, how are we gonna review this, these metrics, this performance and optimize it based on actions? In my example, I mentioned a pilot. I would say learn fast, fail fast, but get into action and see if you can't start unsticking these groups within your funnel, probably in the middle of the funnel that are stuck and you're gonna generate more revenue a lot faster and a lot cheaper and a lot easier than having to go out and find a bunch of new leads and bring them in. All right, let's move to the next one. So the third action I'd like to encourage you to think about gets back to the sales team. And this will absolutely boost revenue. It's incentivizing outcomes. So what do I mean by that? Um, I first, I believe that your sales team, we have to believe they have positive intent. They're there for a reason. They're professionals. And whether you wanna get into a conversation about are there ways to train them and make them better? Absolutely. Any professional sports team, they can always get better with more training and more teaming. But what I want you to think about is just unlocking the power of your team. Okay. And the way I would do that is by really incentivizing outcomes. What are the outcomes you want to generate more revenue and start to incentivize them? And I'm going to talk about how I incentivize them, which is a different take on probably most of the ways you've heard about it or done it in the past. The first thing I would tell you is start to really think about all the different members of your sales team. Can you picture one of them? Which one's really competitive? Do you have him or her in your mind? Which one's like really collaborative? It's always there to help. Which one just loves it when the team gets together? He or she's so social, they're like, yeah, I love our sales meetings. We've all come together. They're joking around and it feeds them. It fills them back up. Well, those are all hints and tricks that you can impl implement to understand what motivates them. Because here's the tip. Motivation is never one size fits all. Not everybody wants to compete. Not everyone wants individual accomplishments. Not everybody's like, yay, team. If you think about your different salespeople and realize that each one of them have kind of like dials or things that they, they really love, then you can start to build an incentive that matches those characteristics. And that's what I'm talking about. So the next, set, set, the next step <laughs> is setting up incentives. And I kind of gave a hint about that in a minute, a minute ago. But when I think about setting up incentives, I want everyone to win. I want all those levers for all the different salespeople to be able to be pulled. And my favorite ones are this, contests. A contest might be who sells the most in a given month, who has the least discount in a given month, or the highest margin on what they sell. That's a contest where I'm putting everyone in the sales team against each other. And I usually have like a first and second and sometimes a third prize just in case the team's that big. But what I want is that competitive spirit to reach into the salespeople I have that love to compete and give them what they want. The second one is individual wins. This is things where I might say, hey, if, you, if your customer pays up front in full, you get a $50 bonus versus financing it maybe over three or six months or some other terms. Or I might say, if you hit eight sales as an individual in a given month, there's a $200 bonus. But what I'm doing is I'm giving levers that that individual salesperson can pull that feels good to them. If they don't wanna compete a lot or they have their own special skill set or their own special way that they, they sell, then give them something that rewards their own success and then remind them about it. And the third is probably my favorite. And at the end of every month, this is when it gets really exciting. And it's when that you bring the team together and you're like, hey, if we hit 200,000 in revenue this month or 500,000 or a million or 2 million or whatever the number is, we all get bonuses. And you, I gotta promise you this, if you do this, that the excitement individually and as a team just starts to build as you get to the end of the month and they start to collaborate your team because they all want to win. And oftentimes I'll do like at, at 200 and 250 and 300 or something like that where they can see it ratchet up and they can start to help each other and collaborate. Because ultimately salespeople, if you can bring out the best in them, they're gonna perform and you're gonna love it. So those are the three things I typically do when I set up incentives. The last part, this is pretty important. It's about changing the perspective or maybe even just revisiting the perspective of who you are within your organization. If you have a sales team and you manage that sales team or influence that sales team at some time, think about yourself as a guide or a mentor. And with all the things we talked about today, 
you have a really great job of just monitoring progress. You have a great job of affirming and celebrating wins, getting people into action. So anybody that's a sales manager out there, I want you to remember these five things. Build relationships with your salespeople. Be a guide and a mentor. Be able to just reach out and say, hey, seems like you're having a rough day or that sounds like a rough sales call. Do you wanna just talk about it a little bit and process things with them and really be there to support them and you're gonna find out that trust accelerates their momentum, accelerates their learning and they start to perform at higher and higher levels. And that gets to the third one, foster trust and support. Really create trust, really create support, it'll pay off. And then just keep morale up. It always accelerates success. If you're having a rough day and you're about to talk to your salesperson, do everything you can to be positive. Salespeople are all about energy and momentum and they're gonna pick up on yours. So start all your sales meetings with a win, get people excited and then continue to foster that morale and that momentum. Because ultimately this is one of my biggest secrets. One of the things I love the most about sales is momentum creates momentum. So if you start to bring the sales team together and talk about leads and customers at the bottom of the funnel and get creative with ideas to help them sell them more. That's going to create momentum. If we start to talk about leads that are stuck and we put new sales processes in place and they see success, that's going to create momentum and even more momentum. And finally, if we put these incentives in, in place, whatever you dream up and the team starts to achieve them, that's definitely going to create momentum. So with that, I just want to tell you a kind of, a quick recap. First, thanks for letting me share these insights with you. Second, these, these ideas really, really work. And I'll just review them one more time. So if you want sales right away, like in a short period of time, certainly you can go find new leads. You can put more money into digital. And, and I'm never going to argue those are bad ideas, especially if you have a proven process and you have a repeatable, scalable kind of sales engine or sales methodology. But if you don't have that, and you're not doing the three things I'm about to, I guarantee if you do them, you will generate more revenue. The first one, start thinking about your sales funnel, not just from the top to the bottom, but from the bottom up. As a reminder, customers, leads that are at the bottom, they are the closest to revenue. And with a little bit of creativity, you can get there. You can unlock that revenue. The second is look at your funnel and kind of think about where populations are growing and stuck. There might be just something really subtle. In my case, in the webinar, we just needed to call a bunch of the people that attended and invite a dialogue. And that in turn generated appointments. And those appointments generated revenue. So I encourage you to think about stuck populations and unstick them. And the last one is really just find ways to connect with your team, unlock the power of the team. And I gotta tell you, Creating an incentive plan that aligns to your goals, the activities that you want is an excellent way to do that. And remember, you can do contests, you can do individual performance and team-based performance. So in summary, thank you very much. Again, my name is Carl Becker. My company is Improving Sales Performance. If you like what I had to say, you might really enjoy my book, Set Up to Win. It's all about the three different frameworks to build a high-performing sales organization. I also have a lot of resources on my website, newsletters, sending out blogs and tips and tricks all the time. I invite you to reach out. And if I can be of service to you, even just give you some advice, process a question, I'd be happy to do it. So thank you again for your time and best of luck.